before I read the text for this morning, I want to ask you a question. And I pray that this, this question will, will just kind of set the stage for the word today. Have you ever had so many victories in your life? Come on. Have you ever had so many victories in your life that one bad day threw you off course? <laughs> Think about this. Have so many victories every day. Every, for the last year, you got it going on. Everything is in line. Your, your, your bills are paid up. All your friends are. I mean, it, you got it going on. And all of a sudden, one bad day shows up and you are all discombobulated. You don't know if you're coming or you're going. You don't know if you're on top or you're on the... You, you ever been like that? Like just one bad day just, just threw you into a downward spiral. Amen? Can I, can I tell you something this morning? Can I encourage you with something this morning? The enemy is not your friend. Amen? Amen? Listen to me. The devil is not your friend. The Bible teaches us that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy every thought of victory you've ever had. This is why when one bad day will mess you up. Because the enemy comes and he doesn't remind you of all the good things. He reminds you of what? That bad day, that bad decision, that bad choice you made. You should have done this and you shouldn't and you shouldn't have listened to Pastor Bobby. And you shouldn't have done what Brother Tito said. And you shouldn't have done. He'll begin to remind you of all the negative things. He won't remind you of the good things you've been doing. But I've got news for you today. Jesus said that I have come to give you life and give you life in abundance, and that trumps. Everything the devil tries to tell you. Right. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? I need you to be with me this morning. Because if you don't understand that, you won't understand the rest of the message. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of 1 Kings. Chapter 19. I'm going to read a few scriptures there. I'm not going to read the entire text of the story, but I encourage you to go back and read uh, in your personal time. Amen. You've heard me say you'll probably leave with 10% of what I say today. So go home and restudy the word. Amen. Dig a little deeper into the word so you'll know, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Amen. First of Kings chapter 19, I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. Uh, and I'll assign the homework for you 10, uh, 10 through Well, the rest of chapter 19. The word of God reads, And Ahab told Jezebel. Now, that's a wicked king and a wicked queen. Okay? And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, how he had executed all of the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and he ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. Wow. Think about that right there. <laughs> the left. Oh, that's a whole nother message right there. <laughs> but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And he came and he sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life. For I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and he lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank 
And he went in the strength of the food for 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Let me read. And then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. A great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind and the earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Suddenly, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. Because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, Torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Haziel as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mahola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet, say yet, yes. I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to bow, and every mouth that has not kissed God. Lord, anoint your word. Anoint this time, Lord. I pray that every heart be softened. I pray that every ear be attentive to the word you are speaking to your church today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Have you ever witnessed a baseball at a baseball game? Uh, have you ever witnessed a young man at a baseball game after striking out just get his helmet and just throw it and fling it against the dugout? Have you ever seen a, 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 a full-grown man in the NFL, I mean in the, in the Major League Baseball, right? Astros, I've seen even a few Astros, right? Have you ever seen them strike out and just hit and break the bat? Or try to break it over their knee and then, then they're out the next couple of games? <laughs> you know why that's, hap that's ever happened? You know why that happens? Anger. Anger, and they've never been taught to lose. A lot of times we put so much stress on winning that we forget that losing is good for something. Amen? And this is what I want to, to illustrate to you today. That it is important that I celebrate the loss just as good as I celebrate the, the victory. Amen? Amen? We have to know that sometimes in your life there will be losses. Amen? And it is up to the man or woman of God what I do with the loss. Amen? And here we find the story of a man of God, a prophet of God, that called fire from heaven, eliminated 400 prophets of the, uh, 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 of, of the prophet Baal, or, or the, the prophets of Baal. Eliminated them, annihilated them. And here we find this man in this text right here, who has come off of one of the greatest victories found in the Bible. We find he finds himself fatigued, frustrated, and inside a cave. Mad. Over a loss. Well, what does that have to do with me, Pastor? I want you to learn to celebrate your losses. Because when you are weak, God is strong. That's right. Amen? Amen? And this is why James says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Amen? Amen? You just might be going through something because you have to learn something. That's right. Amen. Test me, Lord. <laughs> Amen? You, Lord, help me with faith. Oh, be careful. 
Because sometimes the Lord will put us in certain situations not to to because he's mad at you or because you've done something wrong or because you disbelieve simply because there is something that the Lord is trying to teach you. Amen? Kind of like the story of the of the children of Israel in the in the wilderness. What did he tell them? What was his reason for taking them there? Not only because they were mumbling and grumbling and complaining and bickering, but he said this, lest you see war, you turn back. Amen? And sometimes we keep tripping over the same problem because we haven't built no faith. Come on, follow me here, right? Sometimes the Lord will give you the same problem, the same problem, because you ain't learned nothing. Come on. Are you with me? And look what he says. He says, knowing that, your, that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfected and complete lacking nothing. Amen? And here's what it is. Well, Pastor, what do you mean I'm supposed to count it a joy? Here is the definition. When you count your trial, when you count something you're going through, right? When you count that as joy, you know what you're doing? You are looking at your problem for, with the eyes of Christ, of Christ. You are appraising the situation according to your God, not your problem. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. This is why James says, count it a joy when you go through something. That means you're going to go through it, but how you appraise it is what matters. Amen. Because you can appraise it in your own strength. To, huh, come on, how's that working out for you? Or you can appraise it from the lens of Christ. Amen? And he says this, right? Lacking nothing. That means that your trial will produce maturity. It means that there is something to come out of your trial. He uses the word complete. And complete does not mean perfect. Because if you were perfect, you wouldn't be here today. Come on. Amen? Amen? But we are working towards perfection. Jesus invites us to perfection, which it's a struggle. It's a fight. It doesn't matter. You can be a man of God and still struggle. Look at Elijah. Mm -hmm. Right? You can have the greatest victory. You can get the biggest paycheck you've ever gotten in your entire life, and you will still be struggling next week. Because you'll have a flat, your radiator start leaking or something. Come. Amen. Been there? Or like me, my AC went out, then my cooktop went out. And it... Amen. But I counted a joy because I learned patience. And my wife learned to cook on one burner. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And now, look at she got fire burning. Yeah, boy, she just, she tearing it up. But in that season, the Lord was showing us something. Amen? To be complete means this. I have joy and peace on the mountain, and I have joy and peace in the valley, cowboy. Come on. I have joy in the valley, I have joy on the mountaintop. I have joy when I'm blessed. And I have joy when I'm stressed. <laughs> Amen? Go on. I have joy when I'm rich. I have joy when I'm broke. Amen? I have joy when I'm landing in redfish. And I have joy when I'm catching hardheads. Amen? It doesn't matter to me whether I catch a trout or a hardhead. I'm catching something. Amen? Oh, isn't that good? Yeah. It doesn't matter where I'm at. Guess why? Because I have been made complete in the image of God. Amen? I know who I belong to. And it doesn't matter because I know we've been made come for the night, but joy come in the morning. If I keep catching hard hands long enough, I'm here to tell you I'm going to land that redfish. I'm going to land that trout. I may even get a bonus and get a black drum. Come on now. Right? But i got to keep catching hard heads to finally get to the one I want. And this morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, I come to remind you that at this part in Elijah's life, 
He has just come down from one of the, the biggest battles on Mount Carmel. He has annihilated the prophets. He has called fire from heaven. The power of God has proved to the people that he is the man of God himself. Yet he finds himself in a place of exhaustion. He finds himself fatigued. And can I tell you something about the man of God? That he has prayed and he has poured out every ounce of his soul to the ministry that God had for him. He was preaching when he didn't feel like preaching. He was casting out demons when he didn't cast. He was healing the sick. He was delivering the broken heart. He was out there doing his thing. And yet he finds himself frustrated. Feeling like I've won all of these fights, but I'm losing the war. You ever been there? Somebody can relate to me this morning. Have you ever been giving and giving and doing and doing? And you feel like you're winning the fights, but at night when you close your eyes, you feel like you're losing the war. Come on. Just when you've had a good day, comes another trial. And then this trial. And then that trial. And that person. <laughs> I'm not supposed to use people, right? You ever been there? It's not a this and a that, it's a them. We are not exempt, church, from bad days. Come on. You're not exempt from them, church. Neither am I. As the minister, as the shepherd of this church, I'm not exempt from them either. Amen. As a matter of fact, Elijah said, Did I just die, Lord? Jeremiah preaching and preaching and the people not receiving he cursed his own day of birth. Think about this. Men of God, men of God, proven. Jeremiah says, why was I even born? Think about Job, how he lost his family, how he lost his finances, how he lost this, and how he lost this. And yet he says, why am I even born, Lord? Amen? What did his wife say? Curse God. Think about the Apostle Paul after he preaches to the church of Ephesus, Colossians, he preaches to all of these churches, and then he says, Lord, I can't wait to be with you. I'm tired of this, and I'm tired of that, and I'm tired of them, Lord. To be absent from this stinking body is to be present with the Lord, even though he's a man of God, even though he started so many churches, even though... And I'm reminded of Mary and Martha, who were Jesus' friends. Come on now. Can I tell you, Jesus' friends will suffer. How when they lost their brother. But Jesus, if you would have only been here, if you would have only done this, what makes me exempt from losing loved ones? What makes me exempt from losing something or having to do something is, right? We're all men and women of God. We're not exempt from that. Why? Because we live in a sinful world and sin exists and it exists around us. <coughs> and it might even exist in us. Amen? We live in a fallen world, church. But just because we're in the world does not mean we're of the world. Amen? Are you with me? Amen. Jeremiah frustrated, cursed his own life. Job cried, why am I even born? Paul pleaded with the Lord, it's better to leave this crazy world and be with you. Mary and Martha said, if you had only been here. But I come to you this morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, to remind you that even though we go through things, greater is he that is in you than he that is in that world. Amen. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in that world. Let us be a church. Let us be a Christian. Let us be a man or a woman of God that remembers the God you serve. The one that Sylvester talked about last week. When you position yourself in the things of God. Amen. He fights your battles. You don't even have to raise a fist. All you have to do is declare the name of God. 
You see, friends, we learn from this text that Elijah maximized the problem. Can you relate to that? You ever maximize what you're going through? Do you know what happens when you maximize what you go through? You minimize who's on your side. You maximize your problem. You minimize your God. And Elijah done this. The man of God caught fire from heaven. In that particular instance. Because you can have a thousand wins and one loss. If you forget, it will blur your vision. One loss will blur your vision. And the enemy comes, steal, kill, and destroy. He's not after your money. He's not after your wife. He's not after your job. You know what he's after? He wants you to stop. Yes. And if he blurs your vision, and he, I, he, listen, because when your vision is blurred, guess the first thing you're going to do? After you leave the church, walk over here. The first thing you're going to do after you leave the church, is isolate yourself in a cave. Yeah. Like the man of God did. Yeah. He didn't go to therapy. He didn't go to counseling. He didn't go to the pastor. I need help. You know where he went? To the cave. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because sometimes it's easier when I run from him than I fight him. Yeah. Come on now. Because when you run from him, guess what you do? You maximize the problem. You minimize your God. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I want to be the preacher that I maximize my God. I minimize my problem. Amen. Come hell, come high water. Whether I'm broke or whether I'm rich, whether I'm blessed or whether I'm stressed, whether I'm on the mountaintop or I'm in the valley, guess what? I'm going to maximize my God because if he, excuse, if he be for me, who can be against me? Amen. 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 Huh? Are you with me? Are you with me this morning? Have you ever felt like you win the fight, but you lose the war? Let us not be a people that maximize our problems and minimize our God. Let us be men and women of God that stay on the course. The Bible says, no weapon formed or forged against you shall prosper. Mm -hmm. That means they will form. Mm -hmm. That's right. They will form. Yeah. You might have a good streak. Mm -hmm. Thank God for a good streak. Amen? Mm -hmm. But they will form and they will forge against you. But as I said earlier, if God be for you, who can be against you? If God brings you to it, he'll bring you through it or he'll bring you over it. Amen? And there's sometimes i got to go underneath it. Amen. But guess one thing, I will get past it. Uh, right? I can go around you, I can go over you. you get, if you that hard, I'll go under you. <laughs> Amen. But I will go through it. Uh, now here's where here's where the text uh, uh, came to my spirit in verse five. Go to verse five with me. Uh, and, and I'm almost done. I'm not gonna keep you long. Amen. Uh, I'm talking about this eating stuff. I, I know that that kind of moves the, the spiritual side of you, right? <laughs> Amen. You're ready to go eat. Amen. Go to verse 5 with me. Look what the Word of God says. He says, Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Amen. Arise and eat. What does that have to do with me, Pastor? I just love it. You know what this teaches me, cowboy? That even when I'm sleeping, the Lord is working. Even when I'm frustrated, the Lord is working. Because Elijah was tired and he frustrated and fatigued and he fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, God was cooking. You're going to get this in a little bit. While he was sleeping because he was tired and he was upset because he was losing the war, the Lord was cooking because the Lord said, get up and eat. There's bread and there's water. Amen. So I come day, today to tell somebody in here today that even though you're going through it, God is still cooking. Amen. Amen. He is still cooking for you today. He's putting it on the platter for you. He told them, get up and eat bread. Amen? But I also come to tell you this. Be careful what you eat because man cannot live on bread alone. But every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. Amen? 
Look what he says. Get up and eat. While you were sleeping and fatigued, the Lord was working. In the middle of your bad day, God was still providing for you. What them folks said about you, God was providing for you. Isn't that good? Think about this. They denied you? God's still cooking. <laughs> Amen? Listen to this. They don't believe in you? God's still cooking. All you have to do is get up and eat. Amen. Because it's already there. They didn't believe you. They didn't trust you. They told, talked about you. Scandalized your name. Maybe you had a fight you didn't win. But guess what? God is still cooking. You didn't know he was a baker. But he told us in Psalm 23 that thou preparest a table. In the presence of my enemies, I anoint my head and my cup running over. Amen. So if you are anointed, why are you disappointed? <laughs> Come on. In the presence of my enemies, he's cooking. Amen. They made me mad, but he's cooking. Let's eat, church. And can I tell you something? Go to verse 7 with me. See, some of y'all ain't last week. <laughs> some of y'all ain't last week when you was here. But you didn't get it. So now the Lord says a second time. Mm -hmm. right, come on now, you're going to get this in a little bit. You'll get it on the way home. He said a second time. And the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too strong, great for you. Yeah. So he arose and he ate and drank, and he went and strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. You came last week and you missed it. You had a rough week and you missed it. Well, I come back today to tell you as your pastor, as your preacher, to tell you a second time, get up and eat. And the scripture says, because the journey is too long for you. Guess what that means? That the journey will outpower you. Right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That the journey is greater than you are. You can't handle it, church. In your own strength, you won't make it. You'll be isolated in a cave somewhere, blaming sister so-and-so. Right. Yeah. Pastor so-and-so. Mm -hmm. But if you've been eating, it don't matter what happened. You're going to be fed. Yeah, Isn't right. this good? Are you with me? Yeah. Are you ready to eat? Eat a second time. Because what you face may just be beyond your own and here is where we often go wrong. For one, we think that it can't happen to me because I'm a Christian and the pastor says that I have a shield around me. Well, we, we, that's the first thing we think. But the second thing we think is that you can do it in your own strength. Yeah. Amen? So before I go any further, may I ask, how's that working out for you? We think we can do it in our own strength. And I am here to remind you that you just might. You just might be able to do it for a little while. Yeah. 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 And then comes the cave. Yeah. Then comes the cave. Then comes the the isolation. Because in your own strength, you're limited. But in God's strength, you're limitless. There ain't no telling what you. I mess around, call fire from heaven. I mess around, raise the dead up in this place. Because when you have 
been anointed by God and you've been at the table eating not what Pastor Junior is giving you, but the Word of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. See, we can't be folk that want the earthquake all the time. We can't be folk that want the wind all the time. Amen? We can't be folk that want the air, the fire all the time. Because people think that if, if, if it's all of this right here, people think that, oh, it's all of this and a bunch of noise and a bunch of wind in the place. Jesus, the Lord said, I'm not in all that, Beverly. I'm not in all that. He said, you know where I'm at? In that still, small voice that says, come and eat. Arise and eat. And it is when we can get to that place that we can hear that still small voice that says, Arise and eat. The wind, the fire, and the earthquakes, sometimes they're good. Oh, but when you're lost for power, Sometimes you just need that still, mm -hmm. small voice that says, I see you. Mm -hmm. I see you. Mm -hmm. And I'm with you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I don't need all that other stuff. Turning the volume up, don't move the Spirit of God. He's not moved by decibels. He's moved by obedience, when somebody will sit at the table and eat, that's most the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he whispers and he says, I see you. I am with you. And I love this church. And I'm going to close. He says, the only responsibility given to the man of God that was depressed, exhausted, fatigued. The only responsibility given to him, church, was what? To get up. To get up. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Stand to your feet this morning. I pray that today that this word would just remind you that it's okay to have a it's okay to feel frustrated. It's okay to feel discouraged, to get angry at folks. It's okay because we're not perfect. But it's not okay to just sit there and accept that all the time. I may go through something today, but David said, I know where my help coming from. Yes. My help coming from the hills. Mm -hmm. And I want to speak to you this morning. If you've had a bad week, a bad month, or just maybe year 2024, it wasn't all that 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 preacher preached on January 1st. <laughs> maybe you've had a tough year. Maybe there's some things happening in your life right now that you said, you know what, Pastor? Man, I, that word was for me this morning. If you can receive, if you receive that word this morning, and that word is for you this morning, I got another word for you that will put the lid on that one. He told the king, he told Elijah this right here. Go back where you started. Mm -hmm. Go back where you started, Sylvester. And he says this. I set aside 7,000 prophets who are just like you and have not given up. Amen? Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with you? I come today as your pastor to tell you you're not alone. There are men and women set aside 
just so you don't give up. And if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I, I received that word. I've been having a tough time. I've had people talk about me. I had people not trust me. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm going through so much stuff. If you receive that word this morning, I'm going to invite you to take a bold step. Come out here to the front, and I want men and women to surround you to know that you're not alone, church. We are with you. Is that you this morning? You received that word this morning.